So, uh, I was in the hospital for quite a long, not uh, a, an, um, a nursing home for quite a while recently. And everybody in there that I could tell was there to do some sort of uh, their little, you know, cloned disturbance business. And I was about the only agile, like, uh, literal male that I could tell there from my observations. But there were a couple... I say girls, you know, because they had a cute way about them, but they were uh, in their 30s, early 30s. Uh, two that I could uh, observe who obviously had tortured, abused lives, and um, and they were cute, and, and the tortured, abused lives led them to... to you know, be sort of like little, little hornitos, you know, horn, horn dogs, and that I could tell, and, uh, one's name was Kim, and she had a boyfriend that hung around that was, also lived there for a while, who, uh, a German guy that I could tell she used for protection, and then there was another one who was there for a while and she was being overly friendly to me. I think she wound up in a bigger place because she uh, couldn't get uh, her, st her stator going right. And they were both cute girls and Kim, well, Kim, Kim was a successful ice skater. And she had a... Uh, she had a nice body when I first uh, laid eyes on her, but it kept getting worse, and she kept getting these open sores on her face, and she she smoked cigarettes incessantly, and it would always, uh, her picture would always get worse. And the other one I wasn't that attracted to because she was kind of overweight and loose and goofy from the beginning, but... Uh, As far as I could tell, perfectly normal girls who they had, you know, on uh, the pres prescription ingestion diet and uh, were up for uh, further torture investigation, uh, who would make perfectly uh, enviable, respectful housewives had it not been for their uh, prior... Uh, what do they call it? Pre-existing conditions. So. Yeah, Kim. <laughs>